What's up everybody? Back with another Bible study today. We're going to be going through 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Hallelujah. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul, destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later, and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you, if you believe that, and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you, he'll give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And so in the last chapter, we went through uh, the reign of Amaziah. And here in the next, here in chapter 26, we're going to see the reign of Uzziah. And Uzziah is also mentioned in the book of uh, Isaiah. It was in the days, Isaiah chapter 6 more specifically I'm referring to, Isaiah said, oh, the Bible says in Isaiah 6, in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, Isaiah had this vision where he, he saw the throne room of God. Uh, saw the seraphim above the throne of God, and I wasn't expecting to really talk about this, but the seraphim, Above God, above the throne of God. See, there's a cherubim. These are the ones in Ezekiel. In the beginning of Ezekiel, the cherubim, which basically hold up the throne of God. And the seraphim are also mentioned in other places as cherubim. But the seraphim, which means uh, fiery or fiery flying serpent. That's where the word ser seraph means. That's where seraphim comes from. And I believe Satan likely was, uh, well, he was mentioned as a cherub in Ezekiel 27, I believe, 26, 26 or 27. He's mentioned as a cherub. You were the covering cherub. But... The word seraphim or seraph, which, like I said, where seraphim comes from, uh, I believe seraphim is a plural, plural of that, plural of plural of that, but I'd have to double check. Uh, means fiery flying serpents, and I believe Satan was likely one of these seraphim that are above the throne of God, and I believe these are also. The archangels. I believe these are also the four living creatures in the book of Revelation. These seraphim that are, that are above the throne of God. I believe it's Michael, Gabriel, and based on the book of Enoch, Raphael, and Phanuel. These four seraphim that are above the throne of God. But that's different from the from the cherubim that in the beginning of Ezekiel in chapter, I believe, chapter 1 and chapter 10. I'd have to double check. Uh, that are under the throne of God. That basically carry the throne of God. So, I wasn't expecting to speak on that, but God let me to say it. But, chapter 26, we're going to see about Uzziah. And all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the place of his, his, in the place of his father Amaziah, his father, uh, the son of Amaziah, he built Eloth and restored it to Judah after the king slept with his fathers. Uzziah was 16 years old when he, he became king. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. One of, one of the longest reigning kings in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. He did right in the sight of Yahuwah. According to all that his father Amaziah had done. He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah. Who had understanding through the vision of God. And as long as, as he sought Yahuwah, God prospered him. 
So I believe this was Zechariah the prophet. He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding through the vision of God. As long as he sought Yahuwah, God prospered him. And, you know, all the prophets are so amazing when, when, you, when you can understand what they're prophesying. I believe God has given me great understanding on the, on the prophets. I've done Bible studies on all the prophets. If you want to check them out, whether you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, youtube.com slash c slash larry newport just go to the playlist go to the prophets and i don't have any i don't have everything perfect um i just give what god allows me to understand and if i make a mistake that's on me but i give what god allows me to understand and if i don't understand something if i if I'm just, uh, I'll say this is my understanding on, on this, on what this is or what that is. But if I just say it, that's uh, from God. Now he went out and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabna and the wall of Ashdod. And Ashdod, I believe... I know Ashkelon is. I believe Ashdod is still a place in Israel. Over near Gaza. He built, he built the cities in the area of Ashdod and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who lived in Gerbel and the Meonites. The Ammonites also gave tribute to Uzziah and his fame extended to the border of Egypt. For he became very strong. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the corner buttress and fortified them. He built towers in the wilderness and hewed, and he uh, hewed many cisterns or, you know, basically wells. For he had much livestock. Well, cisterns were more, if I remember right, more more a hole dug in the ground not exactly a well where water is coming up from the ground but a hole dug in the ground for rainwater he built towers in the wilderness and hewed many cisterns for he had much livestock both in the lowland and in the plain he also had plowmen and vine dressers in the hill country and had fertile fields for he loved the soil Moreover, Uzziah had an army ready for battle, which entered combat by divisions according to the number, by the the number of of the oh, the number of their muster. I thought they said number, the number of their muster, prepared by J J O the scribe, and Masiah the official under the direction of Hananiah, one of the king's officers, and Hananiah was also uh, mentioned in the story of. In the writings of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah was also prophesying at this time. The total number of the heads of the households of the valiant warriors was 2,600. Under their direction was an elite army of 307,500. Wow. One more time, the total number of the heads of the households of the valiant warriors was 2,600. Under their direction, the 2,600 leaders of the army. Under, the, under the, their direction was a, an elite army of 307,500 who could wage war with great power to help the king against the enemy. Moreover, Uzziah, and this is just Judah, not just, not only, I mean, not Israel. This is only, uh, well, the tribe of Judah. Likely the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, and, and the Levites, some of the Levites. Moreover, Uzziah prepared for all the army shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and sling stones. In Jerusalem, he made 
engines of war, invented by skillful men to be on the towers, and on the corners for the purpose of shooting arrows, and great stones. So basically, the catapults and stuff, I believe. It would be interesting to know exactly what it, what it was. Hence, his fame spread afar, for he was marvelous, marvelously helped until, until he was strong. But when he became strong, his heart was so proud, so proud that he acted corruptly. And was, he was unfaithful to Yahuwah his God. For he en entered the temple of Yahuwah to burn incense on the altar of incense. Then Azariah the priest entered after him, and with him eighty priests of Yahuwah, valiant men. They opposed Uzziah the king and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to Yahuwah. Shoot. Always oh, something, man. It's got uh, bugs attacking me right now. I want to try to do the study. That haven't been bothering me all night. So Uzziah decided to go into the temple and burn incense. He was prideful. He was like, I'm the king. I I have this army. I, I, I'm the crap, basically. And he went into the temple and burned incense, which, which was only for the priest to do. In the temple of God. They opposed Uzziah the king and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to Yahuwah, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who were consecrated to burn incense. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful and will, not have, and will have no honor from Yahuwah God. But Uzziah, with a censer in his hand for burning incense, was, was enraged. And while he was enraged with the priest, leprosy broke out. While he was enraged with the priest, or le leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of Yahuwah, beside the altar of incense. Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked at him. Priests look at, looked at him, and behold, he was leprous on his forehead. And they hurried him out of there. And he himself also hastened to get out, because Yahuwah had smitten him. King Uzziah was a leper to the day of his death, and lived under lived in a separate house, being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of Yahuwah, from the temple. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, first to last, the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, has written. So Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of the grave which belonged to the kings. For they said, He is a leper. And Jotham his son became king in his place. And we're going to see Jotham in the next chapter. But just like... Just like we saw with uh, Joash. Joash started good. He was faithful to God. And he ended up falling away. Same with Uzziah. He didn't... I don't want to say he fell away from God like Joash did necessarily, but but he did in that, that his pride took over and he went in to burn incense by himself Well, he didn't follow the commandment. The command was only for the... He knew this. Only the priests are to burn incense to God. He went astray as well. So let us not go astray, like Joash did, like Uzziah did. Let's stay focused on God and keep His word, keep His commandments according to the way He wants us to keep them. Let's be humble and blameless and serve God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our strength, all our might. Let's be right with Him. Let's do His will in all things. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to Him. He loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. And if you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, if you believe that he died for you on the cross in order to offer you eternal life, and if you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's the end of Second Chronicles 26. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.